Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habitafillah A question was asked barakallahu fikum ustad should we take should we take knowledge from a student of knowledge who sits with well-known people of bid'ah and continually promotes them without mentioning or explaining their deviance and faults in aqida and manhaj so first and foremost ahabitafillah is i can't imagine any of the scholars of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa saying that yes you should sit with someone who sits with ahlul bid'ah and promotes them cuz as was mentioned in the question that they sit with well known people of bid'ah so that means these people are well known for innovation and secondly that they that the person continually promotes them meaning promoting the people of bid'ah without mentioning or explaining their deviance and faults in aqida and manhaj so as i mentioned uh, i can't envision a scholar from ahlus sunnati wal jamaa saying yes you should sit with this person and take knowledge from them however what we have to look at and if we are just and fair and with experience that we've witnessed with these kinds of questions that have been posed to the ulama countless times and posed to the students of knowledge countless times that some people have a very black and white view and they will say don't sit with so and so because he sits with ahl bid'ah okay the reason i say that's black and white is i meaning not that the issue is is not clear cut it's clear cut if the person is a person of bid'ah you know this person is constantly sitting with grave worshipers for example or whatever some people who are not grave worshipers who are muslim but have some serious bid'ah that's well known because as you mentioned in your question you said well known people of bid'ah and secondly you mentioned that they promote them so this is already restricts the question but what about all the circumstances and all those various situ- situations and scenarios we've witnessed over the years of people sitting with people just that someone else doesn't like they may not even be a person of ahl bid'ah or they may have a mistake but yet because one party is not pleased that these about another sheikh or another talib al ilm and believes he's a mubtadi'a he makes ilzam he forces you to take his view so then if you don't you're a mubtadi'a this is similar to the qaida sheikh al islam ibn taymiyyah he mentions men lam yukaffir a kafir fu huwa kafir whoever doesn't declare a disbeliever to be a disbeliever then he's a disbeliever let's look at the understanding of this qaida ulama sunna they look at this qaida very differently than the takfiris so the scholars of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa they say this is in reference to the one who is a disbeliever asliya kafir asli this is a disbeliever who is originally a disbeliever there's no dispute for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes takfir of the Jews and the Christians Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes takfir of the mushrikeen you do have people who say ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah now many i meet them all the time in here in saudi arabia in the bilad al tawhid all the time so what about an american and we've met you know countless brothers some of them you know it's a extreme type of ignorance and a and a weird type of tawil and even Hamza Yusuf has some strange statements but we don't want to go into it unless we have his actual statements but it is so strange this new movement of extreme irja and in accordance with that qaida in general the one who doesn't make takfir of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes takfir of and 
the one who the Prophet ﷺ makes doesn't make takfir of, then they have fallen into disbelief. And this is takdeeb. Takdeeb. This is kufr takdeeb. Kufr denying or negating what the Quran is clear about. There's no there's no mystery on that. Even though they have they're trying to make some ta'wil in this, some strange form of uh misinterpretation. Okay. So what some of the people have done is that now they have then gone and taken. So getting back to that issue of takfir, because we're gonna and then we're gonna show how, what our relevance to our question is. <clears throat> so that is for the disbeliever asli, the kafir asli, the one who is a disbeliever, and there's no dispute. It's it's clear. This does not refer to, for example, specific individuals or even sects necessarily if there is a lot of dispute between Ahl Sunnah or dispute between Ahl Sunnah. For example, there are some people, Imam bin Baz, he made takfir of, or Imam Mukbil made takfir of. But another scholar of Ahl Sunnah didn't agree with that hukum of takfir. They made their ruling based on the Sharia, based on what they understood as far as their tatbiq on that specific individual. They made a hukum, a ruling. So that requires some ijtihad. That requires some striving to get a ruling, meaning they read the kitab ilah, wa sunnat rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa aqwal as-salaf, wa kalam fuqaha, and they understand a mas'ala or some masaya that they see that this individual has transgressed is the bounds of Islam in this and this and this and this. So they make a hukm of takfir. And they are ulama of Ahl Sunnah and Jibal of Ahl Sunnah in the contemporary times. They were. May Allah have mercy upon them. And But another scholar from Ahl Sunnah may disagree. So this was not the minhaj of those ulama, nor the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah for them to then say, oh, you disagree that I made takfir of Saddam Hussein, for example, or whoever. So now you are a disbeliever. No, that, that isn't the tatbiq of that qa'idah for Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. But this is what ISIS, al-Shabaab, uh, Boko Haram, and al-Qa'idah, and all the other, Jamaat al-Takfir wa Hijr, Abu Hamza Misri, uh, Abu Qatad al-Filistini, Abu uh, Muhammad Maktasi, uh, Faisal Jamaiki. This is their, 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 their minhaj. Sayyid Qutub. This is their minhaj. Different from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Baib. That's in the issue of takfir. Now, how does that relate to what we're talking about? This relates to what we're talking about, a habit of Allah, because then we have many people, there's many, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever lives after me will see many differences. If you disagree over something, return it to Allah and His Messenger. If you believe in Allah in the last day. So, the point being, Allah is with regards to the issue of tabdir. So you have individuals, they say, Talib al-Am so-and-so, he's a mubtadiyah. We saw him sitting with so-and-so in a video. He visited so-and-so at the masjid. He was uh, drinking... <coughs> Excuse me. He was drinking tea with so-and-so. Mubtadiya. And he didn't make it clear for us as his audience. Or he didn't make it clear we've seen no refutations from him. Whatever the case. On and on and on and on. So, the issue is, Ahabatifillah, is the tabdi of that individual... It's not that it has to be agreed upon. This is not what we're saying. So let's don't try to say Khalid Green said that there has to be ijma of tabdi on someone. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that this is these when you make that tanzil al hukum al ma'ayin, there is ijtihad in that mas'ala. That the scholar is striving his best to make a ruling on someone. But it's not a nas, it's not the Qur'an, it's not the sunnah. But he's striving based on the book and the sunnah. But he could, قَدْ يُسِيبُ قَدْ يُخْتِي He could make a mistake or he could be correct. And what we've seen in this time is so much hawa. So many desires of so many people. Yom, ba'da yom, taking people off of Ahl sunnah who are ma'roof bi sunnah. 
who spent their lives serving the son of the Prophet Sallallahu and the people are just countless like this. They drink, like my coffee, they drink the coffee and they make takfir to this one. Just that easy. So we've seen a rampant, rabid abuse of this principle of takfir, which takfir and takfir and tibdir. We've seen a, a lot of extremism and it, I mean, you could only, some of the things that have happened, really, a habit of Allah, and I'm being honest, is only something you would really see in a soap opera. Or perhaps you might see it in a cartoon. And even there's a possibility a, a syndicated comic book would have some of these things going, that's been going on. Literally, guys, who are with him and with this group and with these, in this click M's yesterday, last night. The next day they're off it. Don't come to our masjid. Turn your backs, my beloved brothers, on them. What kind of madness is this? So my point is, is that these are Sharia principles based on ilm wa fiqh. And we need our scholars and we need our students of knowledge that are well grounded to make these rulings and help us and teach us. That's what we need. So it's not for you and I just to jump into every issue and to spend our time you know, busying with these issues, have some husn of van. This is what I would say a movement is have husn of van for the person. That especially if they're a person who's a caller to the Sunni, you see, you don't have a question because I think you asking a question like this. You say, should we take from a student of knowledge who sits with well-known innovators, assuming that you wouldn't even think and ask a question like that if you didn't think he was from Ahl Sunnah, but you see him making mistakes in this area. So I would say, the best thing to do when it comes to every individual that's doing this is when it comes to you taking knowledge from them or not, you should ask them about that. Why are you with uh, such and such institute? Why are you with, uh, you know, my my beloved brother, uh, Ustad, Sheikh, why is this? Sheikh, I was just wondering, I, I wanted to know for clarity because we've known that so-and-so has these you know, many of these people have these principles and these principles and these principles. So the point being that I'm trying to make, and sorry for making it so long, is to affirm that, in fact, it is a bid'ah or that these people are mubtedia because a lot of people are finger pointing and taking people quickly off the sunnah. It's just amazing, really, what has happened since my time in Medina up until now. How many ulama, like I said, so many ulama that I, that, Many of the people they've been translated for, they some of them come to the West. These ulama used to sit together. We used to go, it was like nothing. Oh, Sheikh Suleiman Arhei, Sheikh Ibrahim Arhei, Sheikh Saudi Sahemi, Sheikh Obeid Jabri, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari, Sheikh Omar uh, Harkan, Sheikh, you know, Sheikh uh, Mohammed ibn Dohab Akil, all uh, ulama sunnah, Sheikh Abdul Razak, they used to sit together. Now you will not see a lot of them. Subhanallah, to, to, the, to this more modern contemporary fitna, for some of the people, it doesn't bother a lot of us. We just see, because we saw what was going on. But the issue with Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, you know, that people are busy and, and they've broken into, I mean, th that's unimaginable that Sheikh Rabi and Mohammed bin Hadi and, and Sheikh Obeid and these things would split. That there wouldn't have been a... a a, a, a very vigilant effort to rectify. But everybody goes their own separate way. And then all the parties and all the people break and they follow. So then they spend countless, now years, and because I can't say hours, they spend countless years now putting out videos about the same issue. You know, the Sa'afika said this. And the other party says this, you know, it's amazing. So that, that's something really you can only see in a soap opera. And I'm not belittling our ulama. I mean, I, I benefited and I benefit from the books of those who publish books and, and so forth. But it's, this, is, <laughs> this is the fold of that in the time we live in. We live in a time of great fitna. That doesn't mean someone can't leave the sunnah. But the problem is, is the kathra of tabdi' and the tasri' fi tabdi' the quickness to take someone off the sunnah.
and it should be done with bayan, wahujja, and also some patience. Also some patience, not not to stagil. This is what the our ulama, the mountains say, and the ulama kadim, and they say this. So don't you know say that I said this. I said it, but I said it from those ulama sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. So I hope that's clear. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Muhammad.